What's up Safari Nation and welcome back to another video. It is so good to see you guys. If wildlife photography is something that you're into and it's something you want to get better at, then buckle up because this one's for you. The early 2000s marked a new era for the photography world. Digital cameras changed the way that we approach photography and each year they became more advanced as well as more affordable, allowing more people to get into it. The fact that you didn't need to know stuff like aperture, ISO and shutter speed made photography so much more attractive and accessible to the masses. Simply put your camera on auto, aim it at an elephant and click. Boom! That's it! So in 2020, where technology is on a whole other level and the gear needed for basic wildlife photography is as cheap as ever, how do you make sure that you stay on top of your game and keep improving your skills? I'm glad you asked. I compiled a list of three things that you can start doing right now that will instantly have an effect on the quality of your wildlife photos. So without any delay, let's get into it. Number one, change your angle. To me, the most important thing when it comes to wildlife photography is a good eye. The gear that you have comes secondary to your ability to compose a great photo. I've seen some people take better photos with a set of binoculars in their smartphone than the guy next to them with all the gear in the world simply because they have a good eye for composition. And building this skill is actually quite simple. All you need to do is ask yourself, how can I take this shot differently. When I line up a photo of a line, for example, after the first shot, I quickly have a look at it and then I ask myself, what composition or angle doesn't come naturally to me and how can I intentionally compose the shot differently? Should I zoom in on the line's old and scarred face or should I zoom out and get the trees and the grass in the background or is the lion's mane nice and healthy and should I make that the focal point of my composition? Just try two or three different compositions and angles, even if they come out bad, because what you're doing through this process is you're just training your eye and getting a better sense of what angles work and which don't. And over time, getting great composition will become second nature and more of your photos are gonna come out looking great. Number two, Patience is a virtue. Now I know this is something that your grandmother probably tells you all the time, but in its essence it's true. Animals aren't always active and it's sometimes extremely boring and even frustrating sitting and waiting for them to do something. I've sat many an hour in a bird hide trying to get close-ups of specific bird species and plotted along the Okavango River trying to get fish eagles to come in and take a fish and I can't even tell you how many hours I've sat next to sleeping leopards waiting for them to just pick their heads up. It's weird how it all works but if you have a relaxed approach and you prepare yourself mentally that you're going to be patient and wait for that perfect shot, eventually everything just lines up and there's this one moment of pure bliss and perfect opportunity for some great photos. And finally, number three, know your subject's behavior. This takes a little bit of preparation before you actually go out and photograph some wildlife, but a few minutes of preparation could mean the difference between an okay shot and a great one. So if you're going on a safari to Kruger National Park, for example, simply Google animals of Kruger, then spend a few minutes on each of these animals and try and pick up some of their key behavioral aspects, like are they mostly active during the day or at night? Do they feed on grass or on leaves? Or do they need to drink water every day? Just a few simple things that will, first of all, help you better find these animals. And then secondly, help predict their behavior as you spend time photographing them. So go and spend some time practicing these three things and then let me know if they end up working for you. Also, if you have any tips or tricks of your own, or if you have any questions when it comes to wildlife photography, please please leave them in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. And lastly guys, if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and smash that subscribe button to make sure you don't miss any of the more content coming your way. All right, I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.